As a renowned speaker, author, and television personality, Ms. Brown has risen to international promise by delivering a powerful messages, championing greatness over mediocrity. And not a lot of mediocre people here, but he's born a twin in a low-income Liberty City in Miami, Florida. His brother Wes were adopted when they were six weeks old. Miss Mamie Brown. Ms. Brown was a single woman who had very little education or financial means, but a very big heart. As a child, Mr. Brown was mislabeled by confused teachers, clearly. <laughs> there are a few people here who know what I'm talking about. Teachers, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. He went on to clearly overcome that stigma. He rose from a hip-hop talking morning DJ to broadcast manager, from community activist to community leader from political commentator to three-term legislator, from a banquet and nightclub MC to premier keynote speaker. He's spoken all over the world to all types of organizations, and he's here tonight in Soweto, in South Africa, one of the most blessed places in the world. Please come and bless the stage, Mr. Les Brown. Thank you so much, Timothy. It's a Mitzi. You just, you just, you just, just broke my feelings. You know, <laughs> you just broke me and the brothers down. You know, <laughs> you trade a woman. You say, what did she say about if you educate a woman, you educate a nation. Educate a man, you educate an individual. <laughs> I said, ow. <laughs> I mean, you take no prisoners and eat the wounded. <laughs> I'm going to take that back to the States. Yeah. I want to, to uh, first of all, thank all of you for being here, to Mitzi, uh, the CEO, and, and the, I want to thank, which Mitzi, thank you for, for the, the work that you did and, and making this happen. I'd like to recognize all the organizations of South Africa. Black Entrepreneurs Forum, the Business Women's Association, University of Johannesburg, and, and African Rising, and, and Success Resource. It, it's Richard Tan and his, his wife, Veronica Tan, the two entrepreneurs that are responsible for me being here. Would you all please stand? Stand. Yeah, give them a tremendous round of applause. <laughs> they have a commitment to South Africa. To, to help people get a larger vision of themselves and to give them the methods and techniques and the tools by exposing them to some of the most brilliant minds on the planet on how you can begin to change your reality. Also I'd like for you to meet our team. We have Lee and we have, where, where is Lee? Lee, he's, he, he's on camera here. And yes, there, there is Lee right there. They, they came in from, from Malaysia and 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 um, Cerny and Michelle, yes, and and Paul. Where where else? Who else? The whole team. Where's our whole team? Yes, give them a round of applause. <laughs> That's our team there, yes. I want to share a few thoughts with you. How many of you have some major goals you'd like to achieve? Raise your hands, please. Very good. Shake someone's hand on your right and left, look them in the eyes and say, you have something special. You have greatness in you. Very well. I like to ask that question, how many of you have major goals? And usually the majority of people raise their hands. But I want to ask you another question. Last year this time, I would not be able to give this presentation. Last year this time, I was re-diagnosed with cancer, which I beat 17 years ago. My PSA, which stands for prostate-specific antigen, was 1,850. One to four is normal. And cancer had eaten 40% of my T1 vertebrae. But because of God's grace and mercy, I'm cancer-free, debt-free, and vomit. <laughs> Trust me, it's better to be seen than to be viewed. <laughs> Can you feel a brother up in yeah. here, up in here? But I want to ask you another question. As I was reflecting on my life after getting a variety of treatments, 
traditional medicine and alternative methods and techniques. I want to ask you another question. As I was reflecting on my life, how many of you know, and I know you've done things you feel good about, things that you're proud of, but how many of you know if you had your life to live over again, you could have done more than what you've done thus far? Raise your hands, please. Now, that was the point that what we do and what we accomplish in life is only a tip of the iceberg for what's possible for us. Everybody say with me with conviction, live full. Live full. Die empty. Die empty. Say it again, live full. Live full. Die empty. Die empty. After having 238 radiation seed implants and reflecting on my life, I was reading some words by Dr. Howard Thurman. Dr. Thurman was an advisor to Mahatma Gandhi, to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Dr. King Sr. said, Howard, I want you to work with my boy. He wrote some profound pieces. Deep is the hunger, the voice of the genuine, the centering moment. And one night around 3 o'clock in the morning, I couldn't sleep. I read these words. He said, the ideal situation for a man or woman to die is to have family members praying with them as they cross over. He said, but imagine, if you will, being on your deathbed and standing around your bed, the ghost of the dreams the ideas, the abilities, the talents given to you by life and you for whatever reason. You never went after those dreams. You never used those gifts. You never used those talents. You never used your abilities to do more. There they are standing around your bed looking at you with large angry eyes saying, we came to you and only you could have given us life. And now we must die with you forever. And the question is, if you die today, what dreams, what ideas, what innovation, what leadership, what gifts will die with you? Great speaker from the States, from the Bahamas, Miles Monroe, he said, the wealthiest place on the planet is not in in the Far East where there's oil in the ground. It's not in South Africa where there are diamond mines. He said the wealthiest place on the planet is the cemetery. Because there you find potential never realized. There you find dreams never pursued. There you find gifts, abilities, and talents never used. Maybe that's why Henry David Thoreau said, oh God, to reach the point of death, only to realize that you've never lived. Only to realize that you've never scraped the surface of your potential. Maybe that's why one woman asked in a moment of anguish, what if you live your whole life only to discover that it was wrong? <laughs> <laughs> that it was wrong. You have something special. You have greatness within you. But greatness, it's not your destiny. Greatness is a choice that you must make deliberately to reach beyond your comfort zone. Why is that important? Because in order to do something you've never done, you've got to become someone you've never been. You have something special. You have greatness within you. And to prove it, you were chosen one out of 400 million sperm. God had something in mind when he said, I want you. I want you. I want you. I want you. So I want you to think about your goals and dreams. And I want you to think about them in three areas. Number one, some personal goal. My first personal goal was to buy my mother a home. I'm adopted. I feel like Abraham Lincoln who said, all that I am and all that I ever hoped to be, I owe to my mother. I, I saw a sign once that said, God took me out of my biological mother's womb and placed me in the heart of my adopted mother. My mama worked on Miami Beach. She was a domestic worker. She worked for wealthy families. She cleaned homes. And, and she cooked for these families. She, and she kept their children. And we wore the hand-me-down clothes of the children that she kept. And they were kind and generous people. They would say, Mamie, whatever food is left over, you can pack it up and take it home to those children that you have adopted. She only had a third grade education, but she had a PhD in mother with. Hmm. And my mother 
not only was she a great cook, but she, she could bake too. My mama could fix a sweet potato pie so good you couldn't eat it with your shoes off. <laughs> yeah, take your shoes off so you can wiggle your toes. <laughs> walking around these big, beautiful mansions on Miami Beach, I used to say, Mama! She said, what is it, boy? When I become a man, I'm going to buy you a big, beautiful home just like this. How many of you have somebody special you'd like to do something for? Raise your hands, please. Very good. I want you to think about it. I'm going to share with you some strategies on how you can do that. Now, I want you to think about your financial goals. You know, people say, money won't make you happy but everybody want to find out for themselves. <laughs> a friend of mine named Rita Davenport said, money ain't important, but it's right up there with oxygen. <laughs> and let me tell you something, fellas. Even if you're as homely as I am, you got some money. Women will find something cute on you. <laughs> oh, he's got earlobes like Denzel Washington. <laughs> I used to be so broke, I'd walk past the bank and trip the alarm. <laughs> Fredders would call the house if my children would answer the phone and say, my daddy say he ain't home. <laughs> Everybody repeat after me, please. I'll never be broke again. 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 See that for you. Thou shalt decree a thing that shall be established unto you. You will never be broke again. Never, ever, ever. You will always have more than enough money to spare because that's in your destiny. Give yourselves a round of applause. The next thing is we celebrate the 95th birthday of Nelson Mandela. I want you to think about what will your social contribution be? Horace Mann said that we should be ashamed to die until we've made some major contribution to humankind. As we think about the life of this man who gave up 26 years of his life in prison and at tremendous sacrifice to his family, as we think about this life of service, we must know that the greatest celebration is not in terms of the things that we do to recognize his contribution. The greatest celebration is to see him as an example as opposed to an exception. Yeah. And let's give his grandson a round of applause for marking his own footsteps. And so I want you to think about what will your contribution be? There's a Nelson Mandela in you. What will be different here because of you, because of your commitment, because of how you're going to invest your time, because of how you're going to develop yourself, because of your focus, because of your discipline, because of your commitment? What's going to be different? How are you going to carve out a place so that when you go, that, that people will know that you've left a legacy? One of the things that's happening in the States, a lot of people, I don't know if it's here yet, this popularized tattoos. Anybody can sit around and sit down and have somebody mop on their bodies, but trust me on this. The people that's going to make a difference on the planet are people that's making a tattoo on the planet with their service. Yeah. So I want you to think about what's going to be different. What will you do differently? One of the goals I have, I train entrepreneurs how to present themselves, presentation power, how to sell themselves, how to sell their ideas, their products, their services, and their business. It's a master key. Write this down. I'm going to give you some things to write down that's going to be the master key to your changing your life. And the master key to that is learning how to present yourself. I don't have any college training. I speak for major corporations around the world. I just spoke for Procter & Gamble about two weeks ago. I earned more than one hour than 90% of the American public earn working for a whole year. So I don't tell you that to impress you, but to impress upon you, you have something special, you have greatness within you. So one of the goals I have is teaching people how to present themselves, how to sell your products. I didn't have any money when I started out. I used to sleep in my office in the Penobscot building in downtown Detroit, Michigan, hiding in the closet when the janitorial staff came to clean the office, bathing in the sink down the hall. I didn't have the money. I've never known both my parents. They stood up and said, hello, son. I would not know either one. 
But I have this teacher. He, he's in his 90s now, and I'll talk with him next week. I'll, I'll never forget, I walked in his classroom. He said, young man, go to the board and work this problem out for me. I said, sir, I'm, I'm not one of these students. He said, look at me. I said, yes, sir. Go to the board and work the problem out anyhow. I said, I can't do that, sir. And the other students started laughing, saying, he's Leslie. He's got a twin brother, Wesley. His brother's smart. He's DT. He said, what's DT? He's the dumb twin. <laughs> Students erupted in laughter just like many of you just did. And I said, I am, sir. And he came from behind his desk and he looked at me. He said, don't ever say that again. Someone's opinion of you does not have to become your reality. Amen. And that was a turning point in my life. On one hand, I was humiliated. But on the other hand, I was liberated. Because he looked at me with the eyes of Gerda, who said, look at a man the way that he is. He only becomes worse. But look at him as if he were what he could be, then he becomes what he should be. And so what I want to work with you on right now is I want you to write this down, an achievement mindset. An achievement mindset. What will it take for you to begin to make a mark, to leave a legacy, for you to create a new chapter for South Africa? Dr. Carter G. Woodson said, if you can determine what a man shall think, you never have to concern yourself with what he will do. He said, if you can make a man feel inferior, you never have to compel him to seek an inferior status, for he will seek it himself. And if you can make a man feel justly an outcast, never have to order him to go to the back door, he'll go without being told. And if there's no door, his very nature will demand one. Oh. And so one of the most important things that I'm doing with my life now is pre -te teaching people how to speak to individuals, to speak to groups, large groups, small groups, and be able to transform them. As I'm speaking to you right now, I'm overriding the programming in your mind. As I speak to you right now, I'm creating a new blueprint in your mind set right now. I'm navigating an experience. You have an energy signature, and I'm speaking to the higher part of you. And so one of the most important things as entrepreneurs being able to know how to communicate effectively and strategically. Notice I said strategic. Being able to be a strategic, experiential, powerful presenter makes all the difference in the world. It gives you the competitive advantage. That's, that's what has allowed me to dominate this industry for the last 40 years. And I don't have any college education. I've never worked for a major corporation. And, and I've been in this industry now for many years. And I can just tell you this. You have the ability to do more than you can ever begin to imagine. I'm amazed at the genius, the talents, and the abilities, the people that I've, I've ran into. And the reason that a lot of people are failing is because they don't know that they don't know and they think they know. <laughs> and so as you look at your goals and look at your dreams, you want to develop a strategy on working on your mindset. And because you showed up here for Nancy, and I'm going to give all of you a gift, I'm going to send something to you that if you watch this on a regular basis, it will change your life. Trust me on this. As I'm speaking to over 80,000 people in the Georgia Dome, it's called It's Not Over Until I Win. I want you to write this down. Yes at lesbrown.com. Email me and do it within the next 24 hours, and I have my staff send this out to you as a gift. And as you watch this on a regular basis, it's going to begin to reprogram your thinking. One of the most important things you want to do right now, write this down. What you think about, you bring about. What you think about, you bring about. So you want to start focusing on your goals and dreams. And as you listen to this, I want you to think about your goals and dreams on a regular basis. You're going to get some major breakthroughs with less than 90 days as you do this. Because it's going to create a shift in your thinking. Here's something else. Protect your mind. Protect your mind. Don't expose yourself to the pollution that's out here that other people are bringing to you. Avoid head trash. You're in a very challenging situation when you're around a lot of poverty, when you're around a lot of people that have lost hope. You've got to protect your mind. And, and, and the things that are said, why? Because words are powerful. My favorite book says death and life is in the tongue. It doesn't say life and death is in the tongue. It says death and life is in the tongue. Why? Because most people speak death. I want to, I want to give, give you an example of this, and then I'll continue. I want Dr. Julie Van Putten to come up. Because she was 10 years old. Come up. 
she was 10 years old in the Detroit school system, and she was uh, career time, and they were at, are you coming up? <laughs> And so she was asked a question by a teacher, what do you want to be when you grow up? And what did you say to the teacher? I said that I wanted to be a doctor. And what did the teacher say to you? The teacher said to me, that's probably not the best thing for you. How many of you have ever been told that you couldn't do something? Raise your hands, please. Let me show you with you how detrimental that is. And why my favorite book says, faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing. What is your name, sir? Tony? Tone Guy. Tone Guy. If I said to you, Tone Guy, you can't have your dream. Somebody else has to come along and say, Tone Guy, you can. Tone Guy, you can. Tone Guy, listen, you can do that. Don't listen to him, Tone Guy. Somebody else has to come along and say that 16 times to neutralize that one time. <laughs> That's why, ladies and gentlemen, we have to protect ourselves from head tracks. So how did that impact your life after that conversation? I really just believed it. At that point in time, I really said to myself, well, they know better for me than maybe I know for myself. And did you? So what happened? And at that point in time, I had to make a decision. What was I going to do with my own life? And I made the decision that I would become an educator. They said, why don't you become an educator like your mother? Or um, you speak really well. Why, why don't you think about being a counselor? So I went to school and I went to college, and that's exactly what I did. And so she, based upon what was said to her, let us say together, the power of the word. The power of the word. What happened then? At that point in time, I went to college, and that's what I did. I became a health educator, and I got a master's in health education, and I went and I got a master's in counseling, and I just started having my life. I, I went along my life, but deep down inside, I knew that I wanted to be a physician. Now, something else is going to come up here. Let us say together, I want to be a channel. <laughs> to make a difference in people's lives. I want to speak life. How many of you want to speak life? Raise your hands, please. Very good. So she met someone. She met someone. And what happened in that conversation? In that conversation, the person looked at me, and they said to me, after I was working for years and years, they said, you know, you have always wanted to be a physician. Why didn't you do it? And I said, you know, I didn't think I could do it. Uh, I had great grades. I had done extremely well in school. But what I did at that moment in time was that I incorporated into my life the disbelief that that person had for me. Because they said that, they, that I couldn't do it, then I believed in my own life I couldn't do it. Continue, so you go you ahead. No, I want you to tell me what happened. <laughs> no, you go right ahead. And so he spoke to me in a moment, and he said, you can do anything that you want to do. And in a moment, it was like a spell was broken. And that spell, after that, I went back to school. I started looking and, 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 and looking at courses and, and deciding at that point in time that that was something that I wanted to go after. And that was something that I wanted to do. And at 27, at that point in time, by this time, I, I really said, why should I do this? I'm too old now. And he said, no, you will be that old anyway. So you might as well go ahead and get go after what you want. Yes. And so it took me about two to three years to go back. But I went and I did my coursework. And because I had done extremely well in school up to that point in time, what happened was when I went to apply, I actually ended up getting a scholarship at a number of different schools, a full scholarship for an MD-PhD program. And actually, I was able to start medical school when I was 42. So one of the things that I say to, to women, you're never too old. You know, one of the things that happens to us in our lives is that we give up our power. We give up our power to people who say we can't. We give up our power to, to individuals who say that, you know, this isn't for you. You have to do what you need to do for your family. We give up our power because we always think it's somebody else's turn. 
But one of the things that I say to women is take back your power. Yeah. Be really clear that before you can do for anybody, you really have gifts, you have talents, you have abilities, you have skills, you have things that you can do in your own life. And you've been given a charge, you've been given the nurturing role, first to yourself. And many times in our, in our, in our quest to help other people, we give up the power that we have in our own life, in my life. I made the decision that, no, it wasn't my time yet. No, somebody else had to go first. No, uh, I, I couldn't do something because I let somebody else's opinion of me become my reality. And the truth is, if you say you can't, you can't. If you say you won't, you won't. But you always have the ability to do much, much more than you can. And it's never, never too late to start. So I say take back your power. In my case, it wasn't too late. I went into medical school actually when I was 32 years old. And I finished after I was 40. And it was a wonderful experience because I never saw in my life that I could be a physician, that I could be a, a scientist. I, I ended up earning an MD in family medicine, fellowed and boarded in that, a PhD in epidemiology and outcomes research. And had I listened, had I kept listening to the lie that someone had placed on my life for 14 years, I would have never gone after my dream. So you can. It's not too late. For you, the dream may be to have your business, to, 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 to own your own bank account, to, to see a child go to a certain school, to be able to save, to get something that's very important. Maybe something that will give you another opportunity. And what I say to you is, stand where you are now. Learn that it's not too late to learn. One of the things that I ask myself every single day is, what do I know today that I didn't know tomorrow? What can I do today that I couldn't do last week? Because the shortest path to a new life is this to reprogramming your mind, to see where you spend your free time, to see who are the people around you who are saying you can or you can't. And I can tell you, as a physician, as a woman, as a mother, as a daughter, as a partner, as a, as a, as a businesswoman, as, as a woman who recognizes that from us comes the next generation, we must heal our own lives, we must look not just at what's in front of us, not just what's in our hand, but what's in our heart, and recognize that we have a responsibility to, to ourselves to let the flames of promise, of future, of tomorrow continue to grow, continue to flame brightly, so that we can create another tomorrow, not only for ourselves, but for our children. Thank you very much. Uh, she didn't want to speak, she said they came to see you. Did y'all get some value out of that? Yeah. Give another round of applause, all right? <laughs> so she has a PhD in preventative medicine from The Ohio State University and is a medical doctor and headed up, how many patients when you were a medical director under, your, under the auspice of over 100,000 patients? Now, and, but she didn't do that for 14 years because she believed a lie. What lie are you living? <laughs> Let us say together, I have greatness within me. I break the spell of every lie that's been spoken on my life. Put your hand over your heart right now. I can have my dream. I deserve my dream. I'm willing to do what it takes. One last request. I want you to take your right index finger, hold it up right now. All right? I want you to put it in your ear. Put it in your ear. I want you to listen to me. You have something special. You have greatness within you. You have the ability to make history. There's a billionaire in you. There's a billionaire in you. You have the ability to do more than you can ever begin to imagine. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. Live your life from a place of power and possibility. But because of you, 
the world will never be the same again. Because of you and your commitment with your life, this world is a better place. They cannot. The reason I had you to do that, I didn't want you to go in one ear and out the other. <laughs> I got you that time, but let the record show. All right. Now, so as you look at your dreams, look at where you want to go with your life, and your, as you look at your personal goals, your financial goals, and I want you to think about your financial freedom number, that once you earn that, it will alleviate a lot of stress in your life. Once you earn that, you'll be able to do things for your family and, you, and the people you care about and the causes you believe in. Once you earn that, it'll put your life in a different place. Then I want you to think about your social contribution and let us say together with power, feeling, and conviction, it's possible. It's possible. Say it again. It's possible. See, what I'm doing now, I didn't do this for years. You know why? I didn't believe it was possible. I was suffering from possibility blindness. The easiest thing that I do is prepare to give a speech. That's easy when I leave here and, and speak on Saturday morning, and I encourage you to be there because you're going to hear me and other presenters that's going to change your life and provide information for you. Write this down. <coughs> Knowledge is the new currency. <laughs> yes. That's why what, what's happening with this, the National Achievers Congress is providing knowledge for you to begin to unlock a different life for yourself. This is the era of what the late Peter Drucker calls the era of the three C's. Accelerated change, overwhelming complexity, and tremendous competition. People are failing because they don't know that they don't know, and they think they know. The game has changed. How many of you know things have changed? Raise your hands, please. And so when you come to these events, you're going to be exposed to information that will allow you to have the competitive edge. How many of you want the competitive edge? Raise your hands, please. And this is what it gives you. And that's what I did. I invested in myself. You don't get in life what you want. You get in life what you are. And as a result of that, transforming my mindset, I began to believe that it was possible. And, and the thing is, and why I had Dr. Julie come up, the goal is to train 100,000 voices of hope outside of politics and outside of religion, both of which I believe polarize and divide people unwittingly. And the reason that I want to do that is that as you can begin to speak, you can give people hope. When there's hope in the future, it gives you power in the present. That's number one. Number two, encourage people to increase their knowledge and their skill set. There's not a shortage of opportunity. There's a shortage of capacity to take advantage of the opportunities that are available or to create opportunities. And the third thing, and this is very important what you're doing right now, create, write this down, collaborative, achievement-driven, Supportive relationships. I would not be here were it not for Richard and Veronica Tan. That's in the collaborative, achievement-driven, supportive relationship. They know this is in my heart. They know I wanted to be here. And, and so therefore, they made it possible with their relationship with you, made it possible for me to be here. Has it been of some benefit to you so far? Can you see the value of that? All right, very good. So give them another round of applause. Very good. And thank you. Thank you for being accepted. The other thing is, as you look at your goals and dreams, I didn't do it because I looked at the people who were on stage who didn't look like me. I don't have a college education. I never worked for a major corporation. I would go see Tony Robbins and Zig Ziglar and Dr. Robert Schuller, and my heart would be excited because I love to help people. How many of you love to help people? Raise your hands, please. My heart would say, I can do that. And then as I went to the parking lot, my mind asked, how? I mean, you thought about something you wanted to do, and you asked yourself, how? And then you talk yourself out of it. Raise your hands, please. Yeah, that's why my favorite book says, lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. How is none of your business. You have to figure it out. How is none of your business. So I got stuck in my head. Write this down. When there's an argument between your heart and your mind, follow your heart. Because where your heart is, there your treasure is also. I love helping people. I love speaking to people. I love helping people find their voice. I love helping them learn how to tell their story, to earn more, to grow their businesses. I love that. That's who I am. I was born to do this. You want to find out if I'm going this way, I'm dead? Put a microphone in the casket. If I don't say anything, say, he's gone. <laughs> now, here's another reason I didn't do it. You know why I didn't do it? Because it's hard. 
hard for me to learn how to communicate to get access. Let us say together, access. access. See, your ability to communicate gives you access. That's what happened in the presidential election in the United States. President Barack Obama, he was a communicator. He can communicate, and he can galvanize and organize people. Does that make sense? Yes, I'm Mr. Washington, Mr. Brown, yes, sir. He said, develop your mind and develop your communication skills because once you open your mouth, you tell the world who you are. That's why it's very important to learn how to become an effective communicator. And so it was hard. How many of us decided not to do something because it was hard? Raise your hands, please. Very good. Write this down. This is going to change your life and post it someplace where you can see it. If you do what is easy, your life will be hard. But if you do what is hard, your life will be easy. If you do what is easy, complain, talk about the odds, talk about the government, talk about the circumstances, talk about you don't have any money, talk about I failed in the past, we can't do it, I don't have the support. If you do what is easy, anybody can complain. There's never been a statue erected to a critic. <laughs> if you do what is easy, your life will be hard. But if you do what is hard, your life will be easy. Let us say together, it's possible. It's possible. I can have my dream. It's necessary. it's necessary. See, you don't want to be casual about your dream. If you're casual about your dream, you'll end up a casualty. <laughs> You've got to decide that it's necessary. Here's something else. Upgrade your relationships. Yeah. Upgrade your relationships. Write this down. OQP. Say OQP. OQP. Only quality people. <laughs> you want to change your life? You've got to look at the people in your life and ask the question, what is this relationship doing to me? <laughs> Am I growing mentally and emotionally and spiritually? There's some people, if you never saw them again, it'll be too soon. You know? <laughs> you know. Well, that's can I change them? No. It's a full-time job changing yourself. And there's some people that's so negative, they can walk into a dark room and begin to develop. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, behave. Whatever. <laughs> Only quality people, Dr. Dennis Kimbrough said, if you're the smartest one in your group, you need to go to a new group. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Washington, Mr. Brown, what do you want to do with your life? Be clear about your goal. What is it you want to do with your life? I said, sir, I, I want to be a disc jockey. I want to take care of my mother. He said, you want to be a disc jockey? I said, yes, sir, I want to be on the radio. He says, good. He said, develop your mind, develop your communication skills, and upgrade your relationships. I said, yes, sir. He said, I want you to start working on your format. I said, wait a minute, sir. I want to be at this job. I don't have a job yet. And then he quoted Whitney Young. He said, it's better to be prepared for an opportunity and not have one than to have an opportunity and not be prepared. So let us say together, I expect to live my dream. And so what he told me to do, he told me to practice. He told me to visualize and see myself on the air. He gave me some books to read, 10 to 15 pages of something positive every day. I encourage you to do that. Why? Because it did a study of some 3,000 top achievers, Brother Mandela. And here's what they discovered, that 85% of them reach their goals because of their attitude, 15% because of their aptitude. Your mindset, an achiever's mindset, is very important. And so as you look at your goals and dreams, let us say together, I can do this. I can do this. And so what happened was that I began to work on myself, listening to motivational messages on a regular basis. And I came to it. I said, sir, I've done the things that you told me. I visualize myself every day on the air. I practice. I said, I'm ready. So I said, OK, Mr. Brown. So I said, you, you can go on out into the marketplace. I went to apply for a job on Miami Beach. Milton Butterball Smith was the program director of WMGM radio station. Hello, Mrs. Butterball. How are you, sir? My name is Les Brown, sir. I like to be a disc jockey. Young man, you have any journalism in your background? No, sir, I don't. Have any experience? I said, no, sir, I don't. But just give me a shot, sir. Let me audition for you, sir. Let me show you how good I am. He said, no. 
we don't have any job for you. How many have been rejected? Raise your hands, please. I was devastated with rejection. I went back to Mr. Washington. I said, Mr. Washington, they said no. He said, don't take it personally. Most people are so negative, they have to say no seven times before they say yes. <laughs> he said, you got to be hungry. Let us say together, you got to be hungry. He said, go back again. I said, yes, sir. I went back again. Hello, Mrs. Butterball. How are you, sir? My name is Les Brown, sir. I'd like to be discharged. He said, I know what your name is. Weren't you here yesterday? <laughs> I said, yes, sir. Didn't I tell you no yesterday? I said, yes, sir. He said, then why are you back today? He said, well, sir, I didn't know whether or not somebody was fired or somebody was laid off, sir. <laughs> he said, nobody was fired or laid off. Now get on out of here. I came back the next day, talking loud, looking happy like I sing him for the first time. <laughs> I said, oh, no. hello, Mr. Butterball. How are you, sir? My name is Les Brown, sir. I like to be this job. He said, I know what your name is. Weren't you here the last two days? I said, yes, sir. Didn't I tell you no the last two days? I said, yes, sir. He said, then why are you back today? I said, well, sir, I didn't know whether or not someone got sick or someone died. <laughs> He said, no one got sick or died, no one was laid off or fired out. Don't you come back here again. I came back the next day. <laughs> Talking now, looking happy like I'll see you for the first time. <laughs> I said, oh, Mr. Butterball, how are you? He looked at me with rage. He said, go get me some coffee. I said, yes, sir. <laughs> says the greatest among you will be your servant. How many of you are serious about your goals? Raise your hands, please. <laughs> Write this down as entrepreneurs. Provide more service than you get paid for. Mm -hmm. Provide more service than you get paid for. This is what gave me the competitive edge over all the speakers who had more money than I did, who had the complexion of connection that I did not have. They came up with memorized scripts. I trained myself to read a minimum of two books a month, and nobody knows more quotes than I do. I train myself how to use stories and examples and navigate an experience that will change people's lives. And so you want to make yourself stand out. Henry David Thoreau said, do not go where the path may lead, but go where there's no path and leave a trail. And so I became the errand boy for the disc jockeys. I'd go get their lunch and their dinner, and I'd stand in the control room serving them looking at and watching and memorizing their hand movements on the control board, knowing my time will come. Let us say together, my time will come. <laughs> on the weekend, when they came out to the parking lot, their cars would be waxed and clean inside out. They said, hey, who did this? I did, sir. How much do you charge, young man? Oh, nothing, sir. I just wanted to contribute. Write this down, build relationships. I was building a relationship. See, people do business with people they know, like, and trust. Give before you ask. I wanted them to see that I was serious. And so they said, look at here. Donna Ross and the Supremes are coming to town, the Four Tops and the Temptations. Here are my car keys. Pick them up and drive them to the Fountain Blue Hotel on Miami Beach. Be my pleasure to serve you, sir. I was driving these entertainers and the disc jockeys, big, long Cadillacs. Didn't have any driver's license, but I'll drive like that. <laughs> Then one day, it was a Saturday afternoon, a disc jockey by the name of Rockin' Roger was drinking while he was on the air. He began to slur his words. He was stumbling over his words. He was about to fall off the chair. It was a Saturday afternoon, and I was the only one there, looking at him through the control room window, walking back and forth, young, ready. Oh, yeah. And hungry. Yeah. I was saying, drink, rock, drink. <laughs> drink, rock, I gotta go and get him some more good acid. <laughs> then pretty soon the phone rang with the general manager and I answered the phone. I said, hello? He said, young boy, this is Mr. Klein. I said, I know. <laughs> he said, rock can't finish his program. I said, I know. <laughs> I said, would you call one of the other DJs in? I said, yes, sir. I hung the phone up and said, now you must be thinking I'm crazy. <laughs> I called my mama and my girlfriend, Cassandra. I said, y'all come out on the front porch and turn up the radio. I'm about to come on the air. <laughs> I 
waited for about 20 minutes and I called him back. I said, Mr. Klein, I can't find nobody. <laughs> he said, young boy, you know how to work the controls? I said, yes, sir. He said, go in there and work the controls, but don't you say nothing here. I said, yes, sir. <laughs> I couldn't wait to get old Rock out of the way. I put on a fast record. I said, look out, this is me, LB Triple P. Let's find your platter playing pop. There were none before me, and there will be none after me. Therefore, that makes me the one and only. Young and saying the mother maker, certified, bona fide, doably qualified to bring you satisfaction and a whole lot of action. Look out, baby, I'm your love man. I was hungry. <laughs> One hand on your right and left and say you gotta be hungry. Do that right now. <laughs> People that are hungry are willing to do the things today others won't do. Yeah. In order to have the things tomorrow, others won't have. People that are hungry believe always strive to get on top in life because it's the bottom that's overcrowded. Yeah. People that are hungry know if you do what is easy, your life will be hard. Yeah. But if you do what is hard, your life will be easy. I say to you, how many know people who should be here? Raise your hands, please. Who are not? People who should be here that they're not. Raise your hands, please. Let me tell you why they're not here. I only attract millionaires and millionaires in training. Give me some. I don't know what you want to do, but here's what I know. You have something special. You have greatness within you. I want to thank Richard and, and Veronica Tan and Menti for making this possible. I want to thank you, ma'am, for being so kind and generous and allowing us to use the facility. And I want to leave this with you. Label, I want to say thank you, brother. I'm looking forward to working with you. This is something my mother used to love to hear me say. I don't know what your goals are. I, I encourage you, employ you to spread the word about the great work that, that the National Achievers Congress is doing on this coming Saturday and Sunday. It's, 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 it's life transformative, and I encourage you to be there. And you know, success is not convenient. You have to make room for it. You have to accommodate it. It's at the, what's the convention center? What is it? The Stanton Convention Center, yes. So it, it, it's going to change your life. I want to leave this with you. My mother was a 22 year breast, can breast cancer conqueror. Leslie, yes, ma'am. Say a thing for me, boy, that makes me feel good. Yes, ma'am, my mother. I dedicate this to you and to your dream and the greatness that you have within you that brought you here this evening. It says simply this. If you want a thing bad enough to go out and fight for it, mm. to work day and night for it, mm. to give up your time, your peace, and your sleep for it, if all that you dream and scheme is about it, and life seems useless and worthless without it, and if you gladly sweat for it and fret for it and plan for it, and lose all your terror of the opposition for it, and if you simply go after that thing that you want, with all of your capacity, strength and sagacity, faith, hope, and confidence, and stern pertinacity. If neither cold poverty, famish or gold, sickness or pain of body and brain can keep you away from the thing that you want. A dogged and grim, you besiege and beset it. With the help of God, you will get it. This has been Mrs. Mamie Brown's baby boy, and I want to say to you, God bless you, God bless your dream, and God bless South Africa. Thank you.